Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to the Fish Nerds, a show about fish, fishing and eating fish. It's Thanksgiving here in the United States. I'm Clay Grove, Chief Executive Fish Nerd. It's National Podcast Posting Month. We are 28 days deep into this experiment of podcasting. Uh, I am thankful for you for being part of this experiment, for listening to the show. I'm thankful that this NAPOD podcasting posting month is almost over. It's exhausting. I'm actually getting ready right now to head on over to have a Thanksgiving uh, feast with my family. We raised our own turkeys this year uh, and are not eating any fish at all for Thanksgiving. But uh, it is Thanksgiving, and this is the Fish Nerds Podcast, where we talk about fish, fishing, and eating fish. So for Thanksgiving today, we are going to talk about eating fish. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. And this is from the DallasNews.com. Uh, I will kind of warn you about their website. It is a news website, but it also is the most popular pop up website I've ever been on. Like, I cannot read four lines without a pop-up ad jumping in front of my face. But the headline is, why should why you should actually be eating fish on Thanksgiving? Uh, and the tagline on there, if you take a historical look at the first Thanksgiving, seafood and coastal fare played a big part, which is not surprising. Uh, food tradition is the heartbeat of Thanksgiving. It's rare for the celebration to deviate from turkey, dressing, potatoes, and gravy, all the good things we love. But the three-day celebration between 53 pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe in 1621 consisted of a much different spread than what's eaten today. Very little documentation exists that, that clearly states what was served, however... A famous letter from Edward Winslow on December 11th, 1621, points out to a more coastal f- fair. I've never in my life remember a more seasonable year than we have here enjoyed. And if we have once but kind horses and sheep, I make no question but men might live as contented here as any part of the world. For fish and fowl, we have a great abundance. Fresh cod in the summer is but a coarse meat with us. Our bay is full of lobsters all the summer and affords a variety of other fish. In September, we can take a hog's head of eels in a night with a small labor and can dig them out of their beds all winter. We have mussels and a thus at our doors. Oysters have none near, but we can have them brought by the Indians when we will. The hollowed Thanksgiving meal we eat today has transformed over time so much that it might be time to reevaluate what is served. And if we get back to the roots of the first celebration and strive to represent what more accurately their year of eating, seafood should in fact be an integral part of our Thanksgiving spread. Um, and I kind of agree with that, but I think more important to think about is if you really dig deep, it's not about the fish or abundance or whatever. It's about eating locally, eating what you can get where you are. So like if you're in Minnesota and you want to follow the real tradition of Thanksgiving, maybe you don't want to eat food that's from thousands of miles away. Maybe you want to eat something more local. Uh, this article is making a case for seafood, though. Uh, so I'm, I've got that little bit of a sidebar I just gave you there. Uh, John Alexis, owner of TJ Seafood Market in Malibu Poke, says the variety that variety is key to successful seafood Thanksgiving. It's not just about swapping out the turkey for fresh fish, but about creating a new experience with similar flavors. This is a quote. Uh, show your guests variety by using different techniques for different seafood. Serve oysters in the half shell with some gumbo, steamed lobster trail, crab stuffed mushrooms, roasted sh- shell on shrimp, smoked filet of salmon. Just stick with flavors your family enjoys at Thanksgiving table. Uh, Alexis says that people love shellfish at Thanksgiving, like crawfish uh, and dually stuffing and... Uh, and lobster bisque, and there are people who will do whole roast bronzini instead of turkey. But at TJ's, we get a lot of people who just do seafood as a protein and a bunch of different courses instead of turkey. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole rest of the article for you. It also goes into like presentation. You know, one of those really fun things about about Thanksgiving, and you carry that bird to the table and to present this beautiful roasted bird, and you carve it in front of everybody. Uh, there's no reason you can't do that with fish also. You know, a, a big roasted 
dogfish or something. <laughs> I don't know what kind of fish you're going to be eating, but some big roasted fish looks great on the table as well. Uh, but more it's about getting together with people, being thankful for what you got, and eating uh, food that's kind of of a sustainable nature for, for us. I like to eat things that are nearby. Uh, so I'm going to encourage you to enjoy your Thanksgiving dinner with your family if you are in the United States. And if you're not, you can still celebrate your own Thanksgiving. You can still be thankful for what you got. So get out there, eat more fish. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow with more national podcast posting month with more news and that was yeah.